If you're learning to code and you want to get a job as a software engineer, I'm going to share with you five of the biggest mistakes that I see beginners make in their job search and also telling you how to avoid making those mistakes so that your job search can be a lot more effective. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because the final tip that I'll be sharing is a secret hack that can supercharge your job search if you're able to combine it with the first four tips that I'll be giving. So my name is TJ and I'm a self-taught software engineer that teaches beginners how to code and helps them to get jobs as software engineers. You can check the description below for a lot more information about learning to code with me as your mentor. These job searching tips that I'm gonna be giving you come from my experience as a self-taught software engineer that was once a beginner like you, and now from teaching beginners how to code in my coding bootcamp and helping them to get jobs as software engineers, but most importantly, from my experience working as a software engineer and interview numerous software engineer candidates at the companies that I've worked at. If you're still early in your coding journey or you haven't started learning to code yet, make sure that you check the description below to grab my coding curriculum that's packed with tutorials, tutorial videos, and even practice problems and projects to help you start learning to code now. All right, so I mean, let's get into it, right? Let's learn how to get hired as a software engineer. The first mistake that I see beginners make when they're job searching is applying to jobs that are not open to junior engineers. More than half the time, I see beginners applying to jobs that are for mid-level and senior engineers simply because beginners don't know what to look for to gauge whether or not a job posting is actually open to junior engineering candidates. So I'll tell you exactly what to look for. If a job posting is asking for more than four years of experience, that job posting is not open to junior engineers. Any job posting that is looking for more than four years of experience is gonna be looking for mid-level to senior engineers, but any job posting that is looking for four or less years of experience is open to junior engineering candidates. Zero to four years is the range that's still considered junior or very early in terms of being a mid-level. So anything from zero to four years of experience is gonna be open to junior engineers applying to it. All right, mistake number two. The second mistake that I see beginners make when searching for engineering jobs is applying to job postings that are old and outdated. If a job posting has been sitting around for a month or more, you probably don't want to prioritize applying to it because they have likely started the interview process with a few people and they're probably deep in the interview process with one to two candidates already. So what I recommend to my students is to prioritize applying to job postings that are no more than two weeks old. So make sure that you adjust your job search filter to only look at job postings that were posted within the past two weeks. And that'll help you make sure that you're at the top of the line in terms of applications that the hiring manager is actually looking at. And one thing to keep in mind, do you know how when you're looking at a job posting on LinkedIn and it shows you that 200 people have applied to this job? That's not true, right? Like you can completely disregard that because anytime that you see that message on LinkedIn and it says that 200 people have applied to this job, what it really means is that 200 people have clicked the apply button. That doesn't mean that 200 people actually submitted applications because most people are gonna click the apply button to see what the job application actually looks like. That doesn't mean that they actually applied to the job. So don't let that keep you from applying to a job if it looks like a lot of people have applied to it, okay? LinkedIn has no way to tell how many people actually submit applications to a job posting on a third party site. So completely disregard that. All right, now, Mr. Mistake number three, the third mistake that I see beginners make when applying to a job online is not updating the bullet points on their resume to mimic and kind of match the job description of the job posting. And look, I get it. Applying to jobs suck. It can be really time consuming. So it's real easy as human beings to get lazy and start taking shortcuts and just cutting corners by not tailoring each resume to match the job that you're actually applying to. Don't give into that temptation, right? Because all you're doing is really wasting your own time. When you apply to a job online, your application has to do well against the online applicant tracking system, which is ranking resumes by the ones that match the job description the best. Now, when I say to tailor your resume to match the job, 
job description. What I mean by that is to take the, the experience that you already have based on the technologies that you've worked with and the projects that you've built and talk about those things using some of the same terms and technologies from the job posting that match your experience. And that's it. Like you are not expected to know every single technology in a job posting. So just make sure you focus on the technologies that you do have experience with and word those in a similar manner to how the job posting words it. And that's all you have to do to tailor your resume to rank higher when it comes to the online applicant tracking system. So remember, step three is to update the bullet points on your resume to match the job description. Now, number four, and hands down one of the biggest mistakes that I see beginners make when applying to jobs online is not following up with their online application and trying to reach a real person at the company. When you apply to a job online, it is usually being filtered through by some kind of application tracking system. So a real person might not actually get to see your application, especially if the tracking system doesn't rank it high enough. You can actually get around that by reaching out to someone at the company and letting them know that you apply for a role at the company and make sure to include a link to the actual job posting that you apply to and then ask them who you can talk to about next steps. That is the main way that you can make sure that someone actually sees your application, right? By following up with someone at the company and letting them know that you've applied and that you're wondering who you can actually reach out to in terms of next steps. Now, for the students in my coding bootcamp, Every month, I send them a list of about 10 to 15 entry-level software engineering jobs that they can apply to with two points of contact at the company for them to follow up with. So I'm gonna be sharing with you the way that I find those points of contact and the best way is to use LinkedIn. Look up the company that you're applying to and find someone in the engineering department it could be a software engineer, a, a senior software engineer. It can be the engineering manager or even the VP of engineering. It really doesn't matter. Just get in touch with someone in the engineering team who still works at the company and let them know that you've applied to a role there. Share the role with them and your resume and then ask them who you can talk to regarding next steps. If this person doesn't know how to help you, they will likely direct you to someone else at the company that can help you, and boom, there you have it, right? Now you've made sure that a real human being has actually taken a look at your application and seen your resume. So if you can't find someone on the engineering team, just look for someone in the HR department with the title of recruiter or even director of people or just something HR related. If all else fails, then reach out to the CEO of the company, all right? Bottom line is you have to follow up with your online application by reaching out to at least two people at the company that you apply to. All right, now, this is the last and final tip and probably the most important tip that you can use to supercharge your job search and help you to get a job as a software engineer. Tip number five is to volunteer at tech events and meetups. I don't see a lot of beginners doing this at all and they are missing out on a great opportunity to land a job and network with some amazing people in tech. The best and easiest way to network with people is to volunteer at the networking event. That way, instead of you having to approach people and try to introduce yourself, people are gonna be approaching you to learn more about the event. That way, you get to build a good report with the host of the event, and that person probably knows everyone that you might want to meet, right? And also, you helping them with the event will make it a lot easier for them to actually want to refer you because they can now vouch for your work ethic and your timeliness. So make sure that you show up on time, all right? I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't have to tell you that. Also, most tech events have a guest speaker that you will probably want to connect with and the best way to meet the guest speaker is to volunteer at the event because you might be the volunteer assigned to help the guest speaker to get ready to go on stage. And also, as a volunteer, that means you have backstage access to the guest speaker. So volunteering is a good way to quickly build rapport with a lot of people in a very short time span and make it easy for those people to want to help you because they see you being selfless and helping other people. So remember, tip number five is to volunteer at tech events. All you have to do is reach out to the organizer 
and ask them if there's anything that you can volunteer to help out with. And that's it. Most events are always looking for volunteers, okay? So that's it. Hopefully all these tips have been very helpful and insightful. Comment below the word volunteer if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you got to hear what the secret hack that can supercharge your job search is. And let me know what your favorite tip is by commenting your favorite tip down below as well. So don't forget, make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video and also check the description for more resources to help you to start learning how to code.